Hello, this is Casey, also known as Grandpa, from Casey Boomer Tech, where we talk about everything tech and fun stuff for boomers and much, much more. Have you ever had this experience where all of a sudden your computer, you turn your computer on and suddenly got the little dots going round and round and round, and you realize that your computer's hard drive had decided to take a deep six? Well, I'm going to be breaking this into two parts. One, I'm going to talk about what hard drive you should choose possibly to replace it with. And secondly, I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step of getting the data copied, replacing the hard drive on a Dell laptop. So let's get to it. So let's get to it. First thing, let's realize all hard drives die. It's just a matter of the beast. It's a question of just when. Whether you bought that Christmas special laptop, you know, the one that was really, really reduced, and they put a really, really cheap hard drive in, and it'll last just as long as the warranty. And that's similar to what happened to me. The laptop was fine, and two days after the warranty expired, bam, the hard drive died. So I'm replacing it now, and I'm and I have to make a decision what to replace it with, you know. And it shouldn't, and it's not that hard a deal. But let's go over some of your points. First thing, okay, the question comes: Should I do put a another hard drive in, or should I put a solid state drive in? Both are good, okay, but each has its positives and negatives. So let's talk about a few of them. One of them is, okay, let's talk about a standard hard drive. It's a mechanical device. It is a metallic disc with a head that goes back and forth across that reads the data. Now, depending upon the manufacturer, they have a mean time before failure. What does that mean? Simply, it means the time before the thing craps out on you, bottom line. And it's actually listed in a lot of hard drives. Um... And the primary reason that hard drives, mechanical hard drives fail is you have disks that are spinning and there are bearings on the top and the bottom. And depending upon the quality of that bearing will determine really a lot of how long that drive is going to last. Because what happens as the bearing begins to wear on the top and the bottom, the platter begins to tilt back and forth back and forth back and forth now you have your you have your platter and you have a head that rides on a micro distance from the mechanical platter and as it's spinning okay that distance is critical if it makes contact with the disc it'll scratch it and destroying the data wherever it lands now as the the, the platter begins to wobble this begins to happen more and more frequently. And that's essentially how most hard drives fail. Um, some of the drives have um, wings on them that on the heads that will cause the, it to compensate for the wear as it goes. The other one that's most common failure with hard drives and mechanical ones is that sudden power failure. You know, your battery on your laptop is going, and all of a sudden the power shuts off, and now what's happening? The head is sitting out on the platter, which is round, and suddenly, if it's a very good hard drive, a lot of them, as soon as they lose power, there's a spring that pulls the head, the heart, the heads off the disc, preventing a scratch of the drive. But your cheaper ones will scratch. And that's like the difference when you see the, you know, the cheap drive and you say, oh, what's the difference between a red, a blue, a green, yellow? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The difference is the quality of the mechanical drive. Now, the so those are your decisions on that. The second decision is on a mechanical drive is how fast is it spinning? There are basically two speeds. 5400 RPM and 7200 RPMs. The second thing that you'll notice is that there is a, a memory cache 
Now what that means is, as your computer requests data from the hard drive, and that data will come be read off the hard drive, placed into a memory, and then put into the computer. The larger the cache, the faster the data transfer. Now, let's compare a solid state drive. A solid state drive has no moving parts. It's purely electronic, and therefore, there is no chance of a mechanical failure occurring. But there is a chance of a surge wiping it out. Basically, these devices are memory chips. And these memory chips keep in store the data. And each of them has a different read-write capability. So what's the, what does that mean to me? Well, what it means is, is that solid state drives are as um, variable as fruit. You have apples, oranges, bananas, cats, whatever. And each one has a speed of data transfer. So what does this all mean to me? And what it means to you is that what, it, what when you begin to change the drive, you have to decide how old is my computer? Like if you have an older computer that's about four, four or five years old, your data transfer capability on that computer is slower than the computers of today. So if you had an old style hard drive, upgrading to a solid state drive makes sense because it will help speed up the computer in data transfer and make it faster for you. Of course, the newer computers or many of them already have solid state drive. So then the question is if the solid state drive died, do you want to go with a faster solid state drive to make everything work better? Kind of a hard way to go, but here's the bottom line. There is a, a middle of the way drive. It's called a hybrid. And the hybrid is basically a solid state drive and a hard drive mixed together. The solid state drive um, basically usually stores the operating system, the computer. And then the rest of the drive is used for working every day and keeping things going. The question comes into is now is that what is the speed of that drive? Um, I had the unfortunate decision that I made once was to buy one of these hybrids. Now, while the uh, solid state part of the hard drive was high speed, the the mechanical part of it was only 5,400 RPMs and had a very slow data transfer. So once my computer d booted up, which it booted up almost instantly with the solid state portion, it took forever to access data. Very dissatisfied with that kind of performance. So, finally, what does that mean to me in the, in the end? Here's what it does. You need to look at what kind of a drive your computer had. Most computers today is use a San, Santa, S-A-T-A. You need to discover whether the Santa 1, 2, or 3. Santa 3, of course, being one of the fastest drives. Santa 1 is one of the early drives, and the data transfer is slower. So putting a Santa 3 drive in your computer will give you a faster data transfer, faster uh, performance, and all, all in all. Now the question is coming to whether you should go with solid state or, hard, or the other hard drive. Well, how long do you plan on replace, keeping the, um, the computer? Well... If you plan on keeping it for a few more years, a solid state does make more sense. And if you're looking for a performance boost, a solid state does make sense. And there are quite a few of them out there. Um, to, in my review on part two, I'm going to be putting a Western Digital in. Now, Western Digital and all of them make various qualities of solid state drive. And, they, and you'll notice as you look at the specs... Some of them, you know, have it 720 gigabytes per second. Some of them have 550 write speed. Okay. And you look at the top number, it'll say the 
computer will transfer at data li links at 3 gigabytes per second, 6 gigabytes per second, but you have to look at both sides. How fast does it read and how fast does it write? Because some of the lesser expensive solid state drives have a very slow write speed. So what that means is when you're storing something, it's going to slow the computer down. So this is all quite interesting and all quite information. I'm hoping that that is helpful to you. Let me go over one more thing and uh, we'll get on to part two. So the other things that I want to talk to you about is whether you could buy a used or remanufactured solid state drive or mechanical drive. Which should you save some money doing that? Well, the question comes down to is, think of this. There's a term called mean hours between failures. And that means that the average time the computer, the hard drive will fail before how many hours it's being used. So when you buy something used, whether it be a hard drive or a um, solid state drive, you have to consider this, which is why I would never buy a used drive for the simple reason that I don't know how many hours have it's been used. Um, you, you know, if let's say it has a thousand mean hours between failure, you don't know how long it's been running. So let's suppose that it's been, it has run already 800 mean hours between, between 800 mean hours. That means you only have 200 hours left before the probability of failure. Secondly, when you're buying a solid state drive, all right, you have to consider if you're buying a used drive, is there a warranty? Okay, and that's critical because many of the drives, the solid state drives, come with a five year warranty, some with three, some with one. But the refurbished drives, some only them only come with a 30 day drive, 30 day, um, 30 days before they the warranty is up. So that leaves you holding the buck. The other thing you have to consider is, does my new hard drive work on the device that I am putting it into? Is it a Windows machine? Is it a Mac? So those are things you need to consider. So the last points we have to make on going with a solid state drive, and I would think anybody should really install a solid state drive into their computer because um, it's faster. And anything that's faster for me is better. But the thing you have to look at now, the last thing when you're looking at the hard drive is, what do I have? Do I have a standard PC or do I have a Mac? Because there, some, not every hard drive is compatible with every PC. Then the other decision you have to make is, which do I have? If you have a desktop, then you have a 3.5 um, size drive and laptops use 2.5 standard. Or on the newer, newer computers, you're using an M, M3, M6, and that's a tiny little little drive that looks like a USB drive that's inside the computer. So these are things you have to consider also. Uh, what do you have right now? Um, the other thing you need to consider is if you're going to be cloning your own drive, you're going to need a clone device of some type. Um, and that... Um, is number one. The second thing you're going to need to do is many of these have their own cloning software that is included. Seagate does, Western Digital does, but many of the other ones, manufacturers like Trend Micro, uh, Scandis, do not come with a scan, a cloning software to allow you to copy and encrypt your drive, which means you're going to have to buy something externally. Now, I personally use Acronos, A C R O. And IS, and that'll allow me to connect and clone just about any drive, or copy data off it, and most of the time save the uh, data. So those are things to consider. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you. In part two, I'm going to be actually taking a Dell drive, removing the drive, showing you how to clone the software, clone the computer hard drive, and replace it. So look for part two. And um, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And this is KC 
from Casey Boomer Tech out.